it's wellness wednesdays it's wellness wednesday and this wellness wednesday we are talking about why people lose their minds about barbie and <sighs> this is a big subject but basically it's it's part of a much bigger thing where normally we're fighting about, you know, IPs for young people that are male oriented, something like He-Man or, you know, He-Man was a big one um, because they were toys designed basically for six to 10 year old boys and people get very attached to things that they loved when they were that age. And Barbie has been this thing for years. I remember it was one of the big Barbie booms in the 80s when, you know, I was aware of them. I wasn't big on Barbie. I liked Gem and the Holograms. I resented Barbie because it was the doll I was supposed to play with instead of the doll I wanted to play with. Um, I wanted to play with He-Man. Uh, the only girl doll that I liked that I was allowed to have was uh, uh, Gem and the Holograms. Uh, but I didn't like Gem. I liked Aja, I liked Kimber, and I liked Jazz. From the Misfits. I have this thing of I like the most obscure damn characters. And the uh, the drummer. Uh, the Latin American lady with the, the purpley, like the fuchsia hair. Rio? Was that his name? I know the guy was named Rio. But, you know, Jem was about musicians. Whereas Barbie... Barbie was always just this impossible beauty standard that when you're a ginger kid getting called fat and ugly just becomes your enemy and so the barbie movie with its ad campaign if you love barbie this movie is for you if you hate barbie this movie is for you but i don't think anybody really got the way barbie makes people crazy Precisely because she is an embodiment of a human ideal, which is extremely specific. And the intent of the creator of Barbie was that, bar that girls, women, could be more than mothers. Which is why there's never been a pregnant Barbie, only characters like Mitch. And that's a lofty goal. But of course, when you get into big money and toys, you know, you have to get past parents and a lot of parents want very, very normal instilling values. And so you got people like Ginger Gates being all, this is not promoting good values at all because, oh God, you know, it's about the realities of being a woman in, instead of trad wife shit. She's a louder opinion, but, you know, I, I remember I was a little too old for dolls when this happened, but they brought out a Barbie who said math is hard and people got super pissed because, you know, boys were not encouraged to say math is hard. Whereas girls, it was seen as relatable. And the weird thing is math is hard, but that's why you learn it. That's the way, like, yeah, this is good for you. It's like, you know, mental nutrition. Learn it because it teaches you how to think. That worked for me. But obviously I wasn't a Barbie person. And again, you know, I had an encounter recently with with a guy who said Barbie should never be sexualized and knowing what a lot of people do with Barbies I I saw girls my age doing weird shit with Barbies there's 
There is a lot of, you know, libidinous sexual exploration that girls do with Barbies that people don't like to talk about. There was this one person on the old late night show that I was on. She would bring bags of Barbies and leave them in the green room. And one time a, a production staffer came and got me. It was like, you have to see this. And... um. There were all these naked or semi clothed Barbies in compromising poses with each other. And, you know, the, the, the staffer was like, what do I do? I said, close the door. You know, we don't kink shame on this show, but I understand why you don't want to look at that. And this was an adult doing it. I don't think that's morally wrong even though I completely understand why the worker, who was also a woman, was really creeped out. Uh, there's the whole thing about people who cut Barbie's hair. Um, the reality that a lot of people don't want to talk about with Barbie is that we don't just pour our hopes into an aspirational doll like Barbie. We pour our fears and our insecurities and our hatreds into it. Some kids cut Barbie's hair because they're curious. Other kids cut Barbie's hair in an act of hatred and rebellion. You know, I hate pretty girls. I remember so many times staring at this face that I would never be... I mean, that's Barbie's face. And just... I wanted to take all my self-loathing out on that fucking doll. Because just, it wasn't just, I am never going to be this. It's like, why am I supposed to be this? Why does the world want this? Why do men want this? And what I eventually learned as I got older, and the reason I do so much gender content, is that men don't want Barbie. They, they don't. Barbie didn't start this way, but Barbie became what uptight parents and corporate America want girls to aspire to, not what people actually want. And Margot Robbie did a, an interview with Deadline about Barbie and sexualization, and I found her comments fascinating. I referred to this on, on Manly Monday. Um, and I disagree with her wording, but I, I agree with her logic. Let me, uh, I'll pull it up. I hate doing full screens because yuck, but uh, I'll just show you the headlines so you know I'm not bullshitting. Uh, here we go. Margot Robbie on the sexual, sexualization of Barbie and why she wanted to cast Gal Gadot. And here's what she said. Um, Margot Robbie is opening up about Barbie and the sexualization of the doll. The star of the Greta Gerwig directed film also reveals she wanted to get Gal Gadot. She's a uh, Margot Robbie's also an executive producer on this film. But here's what she said. And I'll I'll just read it so that you don't have to look at the yuck. I hate the way these it's too small to read in a phone. I just do it because it's like, look, proof. So uh, Robbie talks about the controversy regarding the sexualization of Barbie. She's a doll. She's a plastic doll. She doesn't have organs. If she doesn't have organs, she doesn't have reproductive organs. If she doesn't have reproductive organs, would she even feel sexual desire? No, I don't think she could. This is Margot Robbie. She said she is sexualized, but she should never be sexy. People can project sex onto her. Yes, she can wear a short skirt, but because it's fun and pink, not because she wanted you to see her butt. And I thought, that's interesting. I'll go back to that in a bit. She goes on to say why she wanted Gal Gadot um, as a Barbie. She said, Gal Gadot is Barbie energy because Gal Gadot is so impossibly beautiful, but you don't hate her for being that beautiful because she's so genuinely sincere and she's so enthusiastically kind that it's almost dorky. It's like right before being a dork. And... I love that perspective. And I mean, that's what she's in. She sees in Barbie. The thing I love about Gal Gadot is she's almost the anti-Barbie because 
you know, I remember when when she was originally cast as Wonder Woman, a lot of people, myself included, were like, she's way too skinny. And then she just made everybody forget that because she so embodies the role. So and I've got a Wonder Woman thing here where she's got like triceps more like mine than Gal Gadot's. But uh, it's an Alex Ross. But um, uh, there's an example of she wasn't physically perfect for the part. But she embodied the part, like Barbie energy. And she does have a very beautiful face. But Gal Gadot seems human in a way that Barbie isn't. Gal Gadot, I mean, Wonder Woman is able to have an edge. And, you know, Gal Gadot may not want to play Barbie because Gal Gadot was in the Israeli military, you know, and people hate her for that alone. And it's almost like people hate Barbie. Like when I went through my I hate Barbie phase, people hate Barbie because Barbie is like constructed to be textbook likable and perfect and inoffensive and you know it's a whole joke of you know her feet are like this so it, she can't even walk flat and of course they put in the promos ah oh, barbie's feet flattening uh literally coming down to earth which you know margot robbie said in the same uh interview that when she initially read the script her first reaction was, this is so good. What a shame it'll never see the light of day because they are never going to let us make this movie. Which I thought is amazing. And, you know, the fact that it was risky because it went there and it, like, shattered records. Like, it did so well. It, it had, like, a pre-COVID opening weekend and, like, pulled up Oppenheimer because of the memes. Like, it's important because it shows that not just a movie starring a woman, but a movie about something incredibly girly is something people will see. And let's face it, we have to give, you know, the gays, as it's affectionately referred to, some specifically gay men, some credit for this. And let's touch on that. Because I've seen a lot of articles really trying to go after Barbie for being heteronormative. But even the people that are quoted in the articles who saw the movie, who are gay, said, no, the performative heteronormativity is the point. It's so over the top programmed that it shows the construct. It shows the norms. It shows that this isn't about human attraction. You know, the stuff we think of as normative heterosexuality, it's all like dolls walking around. And um, without getting into spoilers, I found the way they handle Ken, which people freaked out about. Um, and I think it's an unspoilable movie because it's how it's executed. People are missing that, is it Ryan Gosling who plays him? Yeah. He's not a man. He's a doll shaped like a boy made for girls. Meaning he's gotta be non-threatening, you know, no genitals, um, because got to get past the parents. Oh no, men are predatory. But that's the whole thing that they stick a pin in. That the entire design of Ken is, is gay coded. Precisely because they worked so hard for him to seem to have absolutely no interest in women. And therefore be nice. You know, as Margot Robbie put it, these dolls don't have sex urges in and of themselves. And the Ken doll style kind of trad masculinity that, you know, gay culture plays with, I think 
does come to an extent, I've read a lot of interesting writing about this, about the fact that, you know, Barbie was wish fulfillment for gay boys too. And I, I do think that the way I wasn't allowed to play with He-Man the same way, you know, little gay boys weren't allowed to play with Barbie because they thought they could program us. Um, and it didn't work you know, just shows, let kids like what they like. You're not going to stop them from being who they are by trying to program them with a gender ideology. And the gender ideology of Ken having to be safe, 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 and therefore as Ginger Gates, Matt Gates' wife, puts it low T, meaning low testosterone. Well, that's exactly the point. And that's exactly what the movie was satirizing, that Ken is, just like Barbie, is where we pour all our hopes, dreams, fears, and, and hatreds about femininity. Ken is like the, the similar but opposite in masculinity that he has to be so safe so that you know oh we don't we don't want our girls you know if if it was like i'd, I'd love to see like regular girl barbie and regular guy ken which they get in into with the movie but that's what people are like no they freak out it's like no i'm not saying replace barbie I'm saying it would be interesting to see what they would design because the whole point is it's not possible. When you give a child an adult doll, those things are designed to be training in a sense because we put moral values on what the doll looks like, what's appropriate, what's a good girl, what's a good boy. You know, and the dark side of Ken is that if we made him more like a dude, he becomes this patriarchal monster interested in like subservience and abuse. And that's not, that's not making a commentary on whether that's good or bad. It's a commentary on the fact that it is. You know, should it? You can't stop it. Because if you've ever worked with kids that you ex you suspect might be in abusive homes, one of the things they do is they get them to play with toys. You know, it's become a very dark meme, show me on the doll where the bad man touched you. But that's not just what they do. They give kids toys that simulate family structures or they get kids to draw pictures of families and you'll watch kids. And again, this has been darkly satirized. I've done it myself, but you'll watch kids start working shit out in the toys of mom and dad are fighting or, you know, oh, dad cheated on this Barbie with another, do another Barbie and you know, it's really awesome when you're watching your friend's kids or you're watching your your relative's kids and they start doing that. And it's like. You know, because I got that from somewhere where you can't assume, but you can't just ignore it either. And so, you know, it's like we focus all this energy on demonizing video games, but watch a 10 year old girl play with Barbies and just let her go and watch the fucking rage come out. And we do not want to admit that girls are not programmable dolls. Girls are people. Boys are not programmable dolls. Boys are people. You know, 
And that's why I think it's good if a kid wants to be non-binary, either permanently or temporary, let them do it. Because even if they are working shit out, they're working it out. They don't say stunted. And that's why I thought that uh, comment that Mar Mar Margot Robbie made about, I would argue that Barbie is hyper-feminized, not sexualized. She said sexualized, but not sexy. And her underlying reasoning is very similar to the way I say she's hyper-feminized, but not sexualized, because I'll read it again. People can project sex onto her. Yes, she can wear a short skirt, but because it's fun and pink, not because she wanted you to see her butt. And I do think this is something that we really need to talk about more because of all the presumptions about women, especially teenage girls who dress a certain way. And this really was brought home by um, a friend of mine who runs a youth group. And he periodically has to have the uncomfortable conversation with 15 year old girls about what they're wearing. And he has to thread the needle between not slut shaming them and making them aware of the messages they're sending. And to a girl, they don't know. 15, yeah, okay, they're starting to have something of a sex urge, some earlier, but you know, they're still sort of doping it out. But they don't really know. They're dressing that way because they're emulating people they see as beautiful, usually celebrities or an older family member. And, you know, when they find out that this is what this is communicating, they tend to change the way they dress. Some, and especially, and, and some don't, they're like, I don't care. This is what makes me comfortable. I, I don't care if that's what people receive. This is what I'm doing. But most 15 year old girls do not want that kind of attention from the boys sitting across the room from them. So they don't do it. Uh, and that's just fact. That's, that's again, not a value judgment. But when women are older, they there there does hit a point where you're like fuck it i don't i can't think anymore about what message i am sending and this is so difficult and why i think that barbie quote is so good because some women wear a short skirt because it's fun and pink other women want you to see their butt and for one to be valid the other also has to be valid we cannot have it both ways we cannot assign a value judgment on cute and pink nor can we sign a value judgment on a woman's got a great ass and she wants people to know it and you know the older i get the more it's like enjoy it while it lasts ladies 40 happens, you know, um, and it should be safe. It should be just as safe for a woman to wear a short skirt as it is for a man to take off his shirt. Because is a, does a shirtless guy create a reaction in people who are attracted to men, especially if he's well put together? Absolutely. Does that mean that's why he did it? No. You know, some guys just do it because it's hot. Some guys just do it because they want to avoid tan lines. You know, and some guys ain't looking to attract women. We can't assume. But we do. And it's the assumption that's the problem. And like I said in Monday's video, that go ahead and admire that beautiful work, at art, work of art. 
don't try to pull it off the wall. You know, if somebody looks great, just enjoy it. Don't have to possess it. You know, and, and it is a headspace, you know, the, the story you tell yourself about an extremely attractive person matters. It can be, wow, you know, wow, she's so attractive. Isn't it cool that I get to hang out with her or wow, he's really good looking. I'm just gonna enjoy it, you know, as opposed to the comparisons that we get into that I mean I remember for me it was Kate Moss back in the day Kate Moss was in so many guys lockers in the 90s you know not wearing very much because the Calvin Klein heroin chic thing you could see every fucking rib and there I was you know full competitive dancer my thighs were so thick and my butt was so muscular, I could not find jeans that fit. It was just plus size stores didn't exist back then. And so the the largest size you could get was a 3031 in most stores, especially for for yeah, younger people. You had to go to like uh because the the youth sizes and the the Adult sizes were different, and to get clothing that young people wanted to wear, that was the maximum size. It wasn't happening. I just couldn't. I I ended up embracing grunge because I could wear fucking track pants to school and then like like rip up jeans and stuff because they're a little looser when you rip them. Um, but oh god, that was so hard, and there were no examples of muscular women back then because Kate Moss was the ideal. It was heroin chic. Um, and, uh, you know, that was when models openly talked about eating cotton balls to say skinny. And, and so me with my, like, I could, I could pick up a guy on my shoulder, like bigger than me. You know, guys who were 5'10", 5'11", it's like, over the shoulder, let's go. Because I was doing competitive dance four to six days a week. And I thought I was fat. Because there was no example. And back then, it wasn't like now with, with more body acceptance. That was bad. Like, if you weren't Kate Moss, you got called fat. And so I really resented uh, Kate Moss. And, you know, any guy who was with Kate Moss resented them too. And, you know, Johnny Depp was weird because, like, when he was with Winona Ryder, really liked it. When he was Kate Moss, mm, but, you know, that's a bitter kid doing that. And... Did I take that out in play? Did I take that out on the things that I created? Yeah. Do I understand why, you know, the Twilight novels where this teenager with low self-esteem, this, you know, exotic older guy thinking she's amazing. Do I understand the appeal of that? Yeah. Do I understand why girls don't see the horrible violence that happens to Bella as a problem. Yeah, because girls are taught you, you need to go through pain to be desirable. I mean, teenagers are getting Brazilian butt lifts and like lip shit and all that stuff for a reason. Girls are getting boob jobs at 16 years old for a reason. And it isn't, to feel better about themselves, it's because girls are taught to believe that that's the bare minimum, that if you don't look a certain way, you, you know, you'll only attract the bad people. 
And that's the thing we don't talk about. And that's the thing about the Ken and Barbie thing. That it's not, no one will want you. It's that only the bad people will want you. Because you see, you know, your, your female relatives miserable and constantly complaining about men. And then you see these shiny, perfect people who seem to have perfect lives. And of course, you realize as you're older, that's not true. But, you know, that's the image. And so you think that if you're normal, you end up abused and bitter. But if you're a Barbie, you get a Ken who's safe and loving and devoted, you know, and, and then you you meet the first guy who you think is that and isn't and treats you horribly and then you know if you're if you're me you end up getting into a fist fight with him and I talked about that <laughs> and other things I had a few of those but I wasn't looking for Ken after that um but I mean, the psychology of Barbie is that Barbie is never us. You know, I think it's interesting that Margot Robbie didn't see Barbie as her. She's like, no, Gal Gadot's Barbie. Because, you know, Gal Gadot's, Gal Gadot's the closest thing to a perfect woman that Margot Robbie could think of. And that Barbie is always the other. Barbie is always someone else barbie is never the girl playing with her and that's what gay barbie fans seem to understand um like gay men seem to under maybe because you know the gender thing but that's what they seem to understand and can communicate it in a way that cisgender women can't and i mean let's face it both trans women and cis women both tend to cosmetically alter themselves to look like Barbie, if that's their aspiration. I mean, um, I was left out of the whole Barbie paradigm for a really long time. And then they made this little kid, you know, Kelly. They made a redheaded kid Barbie called Leanna. And I was so amused that I actually started uh, buying them. Because it's like, well, this is weird. Um... And I also thought it was it meant I was past my Barbie hatred. And I actually thought that was good. I actually thought it was really, really important to get past my Barbie hatred. Because if I hadn't gotten past my Barbie hatred, I never would be able to be friends with someone like Song, who really does um, honestly flock to the hyperfeminine stuff, not the pink. But the hyper feminine stuff. And that's why I think it's very important that Margot Robbie's reasoning of she's wearing a short skirt because it's cute and pink, not because she wants you to see her butt. Why that's important, I just changed the language. Because I agree with her that Barbie's not sexy. What Barbie is, is hyper feminine. She is the embodiment of gender role or if you wish sex role um and that for women especially at that time because you know barbie was what the hell barbie was created i think in 60 uh 66 65 um, 69. Okay. 19, 1959. So before the feminine mystique. And that's very important. Um, you know, Barbie being created pre second wave feminism and the fact that, uh, she appeared in a black and white bikini, which nowadays would be, <laughs> You know, <clears throat> um, that, that would be, cause, oh my God, she's in a bathing suit. That's sexualizing a doll for children. Um, by the way, if you see the original Ken, it's hilarious. But yeah, Barbie originally appeared 
in a black and white strapless bathing suit. Not a bikini. I'm sorry. A, uh, a bathing suit. And, you know, that was just when women were thinking, maybe we can be more than uh, wives and mothers. The interesting thing about the original Barbie is she had like reddish, like strawberry blonde hair. And that changed to blonde. And it's um, even when Barbie was released, she was the, the original um, complaint was she had too much of a figure. And yep. Uh, and so, you know, parents originally were like, oh, scandalous. And and uh so they marketed directly to kids via TV and it's like, I want that. And parents caved and then parents do what parents do, which is they care in the shit out of things. And so instead of being a subversive doll, it became something that still had too much of a figure, but was much more prototypically feminine instead of you know, the original Barbie had red lips. Now, you know, Barbie doesn't necessarily come with red lips. It's pink. Pink is a very different psychology than red. Pink is the good girl. Red is the femme fatale, right? Barbie pink. Pink, pink, pink. There's not, there isn't the same sexuality with pink, which is why... Nicki Minaj did the black Barbie thing and went ratchet up the wazoo. Because like, no, I'm going to have sex Barbie. But I agree that Barbie is more about sort of saying, I am a girl and this is for me. And if we can instill that, you know... That girl things are good. I mean, everybody can shut the fuck up about girl things being crap because, you know, they made a smart movie and it made a fuck ton of money. Yes. Um, and it is unabashedly girly, right? But, but people don't understand that we have to stop saying it's man-hating and more accurately say it's man fearing because that is how we train girls to fear any man that isn't hi barbie you know but in doing that we teach girls to fear the world which is not what the original Barbie was intended to do at all. Um, the world changed on Barbie. And instead of Barbie being counterculture, Barbie became, you know, normative culture. And, you know, we get stuff like Legally Blonde that's subversive about it. We got movies like Heather's Back of the Day. We got movies about Mean Girls. It's the pink, you know, hyper-feminine thing. And I really think we do need to look at that hyper femininity and how it does train girls to associate being, you know, showing skin and showing off your figure as pretty while still, while also training them to fear men. So men are scary girls but you need them to like you because that's the mark of a real woman because men only want sex and so you're only a proper woman if they're lusting after you, but don't let them get you because they'll rape you. That's real and that's damaging everybody and it's impossible to not, to separate that from Barbie because as Margot Robbie rightly put it, you know, people project sex 
on to a doll that doesn't have sexual desire. You know, Barbie would be so skinny if she were a real life person, she couldn't menstruate. Which is why I don't know how she has those boobs. They must not be real. But see, this is over intellectualizing it. Barbie's not real. The whole point of Barbie is she's not real. And anything we put onto Barbie, because she has such ridiculous portions proportions not found in nature, because that's changed from the original Barbie too. Uh, that that came out of the 80s in the supermodel. Uh, but because it's so projected onto her, it's not about the doll. It's what's in us that we reflect onto the doll, which is why we love her or why we hate her. You know, it's our aspirations, it's our insecurities, it's our fears and yeah, it's our anchor. It's our sense of frustration. It's a sense of unfairness. It's the act of comparing ourselves to an unattainable ideal. And you can argue that, you know, superheroes are the same for boys. And to an extent that's true. And I can talk about that more on Feedback Friday if you want. But there's something in there's only one barbie and she has a definitive look there's a lot more superheroes for boys and that speaks to there being a lot of things that are considered acceptably manly there's this very narrow thing of what's considered acceptably acceptably girly without it being disqualified for being sexual. And I think that has to change. All right. I hope you like this. And that's why people freak out over Barbie. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching and be well.